Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss and Thor 4, Thor Love and Thunder rap production with an official first look from the set, which you can almost see behind Chris Hemsworth's arms, which out of respect, I'm gonna now start referring to as Love and Thunder. Because you know, you use one arm down under and the other two, uh, never mind. But Thor isn't the only damn demigod returning this week because the sun's out shining once more on the guns out of his adopted brother Loki. So as we plunge into the sacred timeline of this Loki series, I think there is a way it could set up these two to reunite once again, as Loki promised they would. And lucky for many of you, the answers can be found by staring at this photo longer than is probably healthy to do so. So Thor 4 director and Korg actor Taika Waititi shared this image recently to celebrate Love and Thunder rapping productions saying, quote, this film is the craziest thing I've ever done and I'm honored to bust my ass and have a nervous breakdown so you can all see it in May 2022. Craziest thing he's ever done? Big words from a guy who played imaginary Hitler. Now Thor's look seems to be inspired by Jack Burton and Big Trouble in Little China, tight white tank, 80s blue jeans. It's an awesome and crazy film that mixes buddy action with wild mythological fantasy elements. And Taika Waititi has cited this movie as an influence for Thor Ragnarok and Thor's shirt design is blue to be a depiction of Yggdrasil, the world's tree that connects the nine realms, a tree that we saw in Thor the Dark World and was likely destroyed when Surtur wiped out Asgard and Ragnarok. But now the Asgardian refugee settlement of New Asgard in Tonsberg, Norway seems to have been converted into a tourist destination with the floating Viking ship equipped with roller coaster seat harnesses and a shrine built upon the cliffside where Odin died and Hela shattered Mjolnir with that broken Uru still unable to be lifted so they must have dug out the surrounding terrain into a mound pedestal for it. Sam Neill is returning as the Asgardian actor who played Odin, alongside Luke Hemsworth as the Thor actor, Matt Damon as the Loki actor, and now Melissa McCarthy as the actor playing Hela in the reenactment of those Ragnarok events. And Neill said in an interview that he had no idea what country or planet this was all set in, which makes sense because they shot this in Australia, made it to look like Norway, in a theme park stage that once stood on Asgard. And perhaps this tank is merch that Thor got from the new Asgard gift shop, and something all of us will be able to buy from Spider-Man and Captain America Sam Wilson at the Disneyland Adventures Campus gift shop. Because let's be honest, that's what this is all about. Now as Korg, Taika is wearing what might be another piece of merch, a belt buckle showing the head of a goat or ram. Yeah, this is likely a nod to the goat-like beast's teeth bearer and teeth grinder who pulled Thor's chariot. Because stand-ins for them have been spotted on set, though these also might be just another ride at the new Asgard park, like a kiddie ride that Thor is kind of annoyed at. Now Korg and Thor Thor are standing on the Benatar, the Asgardian ship. As we know, the Guardians of the Galaxy will be in this movie, and I'm thinking Peter Quill's celestial heritage is gonna mark him as a god alongside Thor that Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher has on his kill list. And seeing jacked Thor on this ship brings him full circle since the last time he stood here, he was messing around with Quill over who was gonna be the real captain of the Asgardians of the Galaxy. With Pillsbury Thor boy giving Quill a look like, oh, soon I'm gonna get back in shape as the true man pirate angel who triggered your manhood. I'm muscular. But who are you kidding, Quill? You're one sandwich away from fat. Yeah, right. That's true, Quill. You have put on weight. What? But before we continue, thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. If you have anyone relying on your income, you need life insurance. It's that simple. Our sponsor, Policy Genius, makes it easy to get life insurance. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. That's money that you can use to do some fun summer stuff, like take a vacation or build the world's longest slip and slide. But in all sincerity, there are a few things that reduce stress more than having the peace of mind that your loved ones will be taken care of if anything happens to you. You could save $1,300 or more per year year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. Getting started is super easy. First, head to policygenius.com slash new rockstars. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. And when you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. The licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not for the insurance company, so that you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. Head to policygenius.com slash new rockstars to get started now. 
Policy genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Under Tyka's photo, Luke Hemsworth gave an interesting comment saying, it is a joy to watch two people expand in so many ways. None of those ways that you both expanded are healthy, but I still laugh and think, wow, they really expanded. But then I remember I too expanded and I'm left feeling responsible for expansion on all sides. Bravo fellas to infinity and beyond. Just kidding, you look epic. So this is why I think Thor's huge arms are both kind of a jokey meta aspect of the character, but also something that could be part of the plot. I mean, sure, Hemsworth is always getting in crazy shape for these movies, and in this case, he's hitting the weights really hard because he's going to be playing Hulk Hogan soon. But the fact that Thor so quickly bounces back into shape is a reflection of his demigod status. And I think they may go in the direction of Chris Pratt's meta joke in Parks and Rec when he lost a ton of weight to first play Star-Lord. Only thing you did was stop drinking beer? Yeah, I lost 50 pounds in one month. How much beer were you drinking? <laughs> I know, right? Probably too much. And that may be the same explanation the Asgardian Thor gives back to him. Remember those empty kegs of Asgardian Ale in Endgame? That might have just been a mere month of carb loading by Thor. Because really, his natural state is muscular. He is super strength. What resistance would he have to be able to build muscles like that? As I explained in our recent Celestial Family Tree video, which by the way, definitely check that out, the Earth X comics tied the Asgardians to celestial origins. And it tried to redefine them as aliens that were manipulated by the Celestials, who put them in the third tier of the Celestial Mutation Cycle that makes the Asgardians' appearance, their powers, their identities, all defined by the belief of others. So remember, in the first Thor movie, we saw Odin save the Norse people in 965 AD from the Frost Giants, and so the very identities of Odin and Thor, Loki, Hela, Frigga, Heimdall, Mjolnir, everything, are all just reflections of the mythology of those who believe in them. Kind of like Santa. So Thor's freakishly expanded arms, as well as Jane Foster's swole appearance from the set photos, those aren't just aesthetic superhero movie prereqs. They are character traits defining their Asgardian status. Those guns are what make them a target for gore. And yeah, I do think that applies to Loki too. He's a frost giant ward who was raised and trained with Asgardian power. Forms of sorcery that we're going to see fully expanded in the Loki show. Remember, the last time we saw Loki and Thor together, Loki told him, The sun will shine on us again. A moment that this Loki series is likely to revisit in that TVA alternate life theater based on Loki's triggered turn away, probably seeing the moment of his death. And we also know in the show that Loki will say, Brother, I'm down. You'd better be ready. By brother, he's talking to Thor in that moment. So yeah, here Loki appears to be making good on that promise for the sun to shine on both of them once more. But if Loki is dead in the primary sacred MCU timeline where Thor Love and Thunder appears to be set, and the Loki series is variant L1130, how will their paths cross exactly? Well, the answer may have presented herself under Tyka's post, Jamie Alexander, the actress who plays Lady Sif. After being absent from Thor Ragnarok, Sif avoided Hela's massacre of the Warriors 3 and is confirmed to return in Thor Love and Thunder. Meanwhile, rumors suggest Sif may also cameo in Loki based on Jamie Alexander believed to be in Atlanta while Loki was in production there. Lady Sif is crucial to Loki's reincarnation as Lady Loki in the comics following his destruction in the Ragnarok event. The female form intended to be the vessel of Sif's reincarnated soul is instead possessed by Loki. And similar events may occur in the Loki series, which is confirmed to visit some alternate timeline in which Asgard still stands, with an alternate throne of Asgard that was not the exact shape as the one that Odin sat on with his two ravens, but rather one that looks like it has a serpentine design, serpents being beasts associated with Loki. And the show appears to revolve around Loki variants, including Sofia DiMartino as a Lady Loki. Her spirit could end up in the body of Lady Sif, as happens in the comics, explaining how a variant Loki and Thor end up together in Thor Love and Thunder with the sun shining on them once more. Confused? Hey, don't worry. We're about to go nuts breaking down Loki with same day after shows and next day Easter egg breakdowns and a full lineup of Loki merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis and breakdowns of everything Marvel. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you're going to say this video was just an excuse to talk about Chris Hemsworth's triceps for eight minutes, you're correct and you're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.